We are in NCCR Core Module 5, and this is going to be Part 2, um, Section 2. And so we've talked about the different types of plans. And so this one is we're going to look at what are some of the different symbols that are common to see on the plan so you know what they mean. And so first off, important thing to recognize is dimension lines. And so usually most plans I've seen, the dimensions are marked by this little cross in the corners. So that means your measurement starts from point A and ends on point B. Right, so there's always going to be some way of marking where the measurement starts and stops. It's important to know that, know that because sometimes if this is a long wall and it has a measurement here, 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 there's different details and it's broken up. You need to know where the measurement starts and stops. So look for those little break lines. That's going to be telling you those things. All right, these are just um, basic examples. So these are just leaders or arrowheads, as they say, but this is just pointing to a detail. And so they want to say they can't fit a measurement or a detail information right there. They're going to draw one of those arrows and put it off to the side so you can actually read it. Right. And so that's pretty self-explanatory. Property line. Um, you'll see this little PL. That means it's the edge of the property. All right. Oh, where did it go? Trying to move it so you can read. So it cut lines. Um, that means they're taking out a section basically. Um, and so lots of times what they'll do is they'll have pretend they're cutting out a section and then there's going to be a zoomed in detail of that in the corner or something. And so section, um, so it just kind of looks like they're going to symbolize that they're taking out that section. Um, and so it's, I guess I don't, how the test or the, how they want you to know it. Um, in the alphabet lines, so the alphabet lines is just this. That's what they call it. Is an area not included in the cutting line view is shown with section cuts. And so it's just going to show you this is the part that's not going to be seen. Um, not included in that cutting line view because it's been cut out. Right? So that is your section cut. That has been cut out. Now, break lines are a little bit different than a section cut because instead of just like taking a section out and popping it out, break lines, you're removing a whole big portion of the building. And so let's say this is because they want on the plan, they want you to have the detail. Say this is just a big warehouse and everything's the same the whole way through. Um, and they want to save space. So they're going to break out. They're going to cut away that middle part of the building so they can show you the details of the corners. And so they cut out some of the middle. And so what they're going to do is do this symbol, some kind of zigzag and that's symbolizing that you're missing half the, or not half, but you're missing a chunk of the building, right? They took it out to save space. So they're going to use break lines to save space. And this is again, to just shorten the building or shorten something so that you can see it because that information is not what's important, right? They're trying to give you some other detail. And they want you to be able to see that clearly. So they're saving space and getting rid of it with the break line. Hidden lines are usually just dotted center lines, um, object lines, different things, pretty explanatory. And on all blueprints, they're going to have a, something that's going to tell you what these mean, a legend of some kind that are explaining what these mean. Abbreviations, there's some pretty common ones you'll have to know um, and different symbols. But again, you'll learn those. A lot of them make sense as you go uh, on center or something to scale. Um, let's see if I can find um, that. There's the elevation symbol I told you guys about. Um, let's see, there's, I don't know, pretty much, if it's a foot measurement, FT, shortened, but they're basically just shortened version of the word. And so again, there's going to be something that tells you what these all mean. You won't have to try to figure it out on your own. All right, symbols. So this is just showing you different kinds of materials. These are some common symbols that you'll find. And so this is just gonna be on your plan like, oh, if you see brick, it's gonna show you that it looks like kind of like bricks. If it's gonna be made out of wood or it's gonna be made out of cement, there's different ways that they mark the materials and details. All right, grid lines. Grid lines are awesome because it's like playing Battleship. If you're on the phone and you want to communicate with the architect and say, hey, I have a problem with the window, he's going to say, which one? And he's going to be like, well, the one in that, you know, that corner, it's complicated. But 
in Battleship, right, you can pinpoint where you're trying to aim to hit the, your opponent, your enemy's ship, right? You're going to say, oh, it's in B, B6, and that's the point. And so if, when you call your architect and say, hey, I have a problem, what you can do is I have a question with the light switch in C5, and he can look at that, zoom in on that detail, and be able to answer that question. Or if you have a question, you have to ask your foreman about it, right? And so it's just... Grid lines are just help you speed things up, make it easier. It's like playing Battleship, like I said. It's just to help you pinpoint where you are, so it just sh shortens that area that you're looking in. All right, and so let's see, dimensions. Dimensions are just a measurement written as a number, and so that's what a dimension is. And so it's important to know where your measurements are starting and stopping because it can be from inside to inside, and so when I was doing stuff, we last time we were working in finished houses. So our measurements from the designer were coming from inside the drywall, inside the drywall, because the house was already built and we're just renovating. If it's new construction, usually you're doing it from framing to framing. Or sometimes you can do a measurement from center to center, and then you have to figure out the distance or thickness of your materials. So just make sure you know where it's starting from. Um, and there's, again, going to be something that tells you this, but make sure you know you're pulling from the right is it from the outside of the walls or the inside of the walls um is it from the outside of the trim all these different details make sure you're pulling um the right measurement and so scaling think about a blue a, if you did a full scale um picture of a house it's not going to fit on paper because houses are huge right you have to shrink everything down and so you scale things to let people know like um it's a not a universal because each different each plan could be a little bit different but for that plan, it becomes the new normal for measurements, if that makes sense. So uh, let's say this one is a quarter inch per foot. And so what that means, you're going to see it on a plan. It's, do they have it? It's going to say something like this, quarter inch equals one foot scale. You're going to see that on your plan somewhere. And what that means is for every quarter inch on your paper, shrunken down in real life, that means it actually equals a foot. And so there's common ones. There's eighth inch, quarter inch is pretty common in houses. Half inch maybe for details as it's getting bigger. But always look for what is the scale first so you know to translate that over. And so it's just simple math. So let's say I have a whole inch worth of on my blueprint. It measures one inch. There's four quarters in one inch. So that means that in real life that equals four feet. Does that make sense? If it's an eighth inch, let's say it measures a half inch on a the piece of paper and it's an eighth inch scale well there are in a half inch there's four eighths right same fraction four eighths equals a half inch and so a half inch and eighth inch scale equals four feet right and so you're just knowing your scale and again i think they talk about it but an engineer scale for civil plans they're doing on a really big i mean they need really big um or they're drawing really big things big lots so they have to go to shrink it down even more and so lots of times they'll use base scale of 10 because it's easy to um, shrink it way down. Because it can easily, you can do it by 10 or you can hop up to 100 um, or multiples like that. So metric scale also is in units of 10. But just know that engineer scales are going to be doing that. And so that's the difference. And that is wrapping up module 5. So again, basic things you want to know. This is a real quick overview. But are what am I looking for? Is this a measurement for a wall? Is this a height elevation? Is this a detail of the finish? And you're going to know, what do I need to flip to? You're going to find that spot and look for the detail that you need. And so your foreman, what he's probably going to do is just kind of study, look over, overview the whole plans, kind of get a general idea of where things are. And then so he can quickly flip to what it is. He's going to read the little legends that tell him what... Each line means what the different abbreviations mean. He's going to figure out those details. That's his job. And your job is then he'll tell you and you'll get to build it. But again, if you can read those plans, it helps him. You can start laying walls out and things. And it's moving you up um, the chain of command, essentially, faster if you can read these blueprints. And don't be afraid of them. It's just like a Lego set, kind of, but a lot more details. So just find what you need and don't worry about all the other details. Just look at for what you need.